Hello, I'm the Kotchichi. The topic of today is going to be the time of troubles in Russia. And no, it is not the Ukraine crisis or the war. Instead, this event that I'm going to discuss happened during the 17th century. Event or event? It was a series of events, rather. The time of troubles, or as it's called in Russian, Smutnoye Vremya, was a period of political chaos in Russia that followed the demise of the Rurik dynasty, 1598, and ended with the establishment of the Romanov dynasty, 1613, for the crowning of Mikhail I, the Romanov dynasty being the dynasty that ruled Russia until the February Revolution. The so-called Time of Troubles was one of the darkest periods of history in Russian history. And considering the competition that is really saying something when you have to deal with the Mongols, Nazi invaders and Stalinist purges. It's just some examples of the competition. In 1598, Fyodor I, last in the line of the Rurik dynasty, died. He was the son of Ivan the Terrible and had been the crown prince after his father had killed his older brother, Ivan the Younger, in the year 1581. Fyodor I turned out to have been a weak Tsar who let much of the power in the Tsar office slip away to local rulership in Russia until his death, leaving a very fragmented state with very dispersed power. So Russia was not in a good state during the time of Fyodor I's death. Worse yet, Fyodor I had not left any heir to the throne. So Fyodor I was succeeded as Tsar of Russia by his brother-in-law, Boris Godunov. And uh, Boris was soon faced with problems of famine, just as he took the throne in 1601-1603. The famine itself is believed to have been caused by the Little Ice Age, which in turn was caused by a volcanic eruption in Peru. Boris soon faced a difficult situation due to the famine. Combined with various rebellions caused by this famine and by local lords and nobility trying to get away from the Tsarist power. And if the Boyar opposition, that's to say the nobles, was not enough, Boris also faced the challenge of a Polish supported pretender to the Tsar throne, the so-called false Dmitri, who claimed to be Dmitri, a half-brother of the late Tsar Fyodor, and a son of Ivan the Terrible. Despite all of these problems, Boris actually managed to maintain his regime in the face of Polish-backed rebellion and boyar opposition to his rule, and the general problems during the famine. However, the stabilizing factor of Boris would not last, as he died 1605 due to mysterious circumstances. As soon as Boris died, a group of supporters of the false Dmitri killed Boris's son who had been made a heir to the throne and made Dmitri Tsar. However, the boyars soon got into conflict with this new Tsar. So they assassinated him on May 1606 after the arrival of Swedish troops who had invaded and caused Dmitri defeats in battle. In the steed of Dmitri, a lot of boyars placed the powerful nobleman Vasily Shudsky Vasily had also the advantage of being supported by the Swedish crown, who had just invaded. Boyars, who were opposed to Vasily being crowned the Tsar, joined the Polish king Sigismund, 
were declared war on Muscovy in response to the Swedish intervention. And in September 1609 led an army into Russia and defeated Vasily's forces and disposed of him. Now you might be wondering why Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth were involved directly in this. Well firstly at the time Russia bordered both Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Secondly this has to do with familial politics and is due to a greater conflict between Sigismund III and another branch of the Swedish Vasa dynasty which Sigismund was also a part of. Haha, min brorson, du kommer inte kunna få Ryssland. Jag tar det. Dra åt vandrars farbror. Räckte det inte med att du dog Sverige? This conflict between these two branches of the Vasa family also involved a lot of religious politics. As this is in the middle of the reformation. And uh, the Swedish crown was protestant whereas the branch of Sigismund was Catholic and supported the Catholic church. Min tro är den rätta tron. Nej, det är min tro som är det. Also, remember this because it's going to be, become important later that Russia is orthodox, not Protestant or Catholic. One important thing to understand is that Russia back then in the 17th century was kind of a weak backwards place that was used as a pawn in the fighting between Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Sweden was also a rising power during this era and these power struggles have to be viewed as a newer power, Sweden, rising to challenge the older power in the form of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Controlling Russia or converting it to the true faith would count as a great victory in this power struggle. And the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth has their own interests to preserve the power and to control Russia as well. This caused a series of puppet rulers who were quickly replaced by each other and some seriously brutal fighting where both Poland, Lithuania and Sweden would rather be destroying Russia than giving it to the other side unharmed. For example, when Sigismund and Poland evaded, Swedish forces resorted to burning down cities and destroying fields and slaughtering people left and right. And uh, Polish forces also slaughtered their way through Russia when trying to invade. You also have to remember that these two armies, both the Swedish army and the po Polish Lithuanian army, are armies that are at least nominally motivated a lot by religion by either the Protestant or Catholic version of Christianity. And we have to remember that a lot of these forces were just as fanatical or even more fanatical than modern day Islamists. These were not your peaceful Sunday going church worshippers. And remember again, most Russians were Orthodox Christians, so they were neither Protestant or Catholics, like the invaders. So a lot of forced conversions or killing of unbelievers were common. So both Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth were very brutal in their occupation and in their proxy wars over the throne of Russia. Indeed, it is as the old Roman writer Tacitus once stated. Great empires are not maintained by timidity. Fanatical armies involved in conflicts that make most of the modern day conflicts in the Middle East look tame in comparison, combined with a series of uprisings and other foreign actors, such as Tatar incursions, caused great damage and massive amounts of death in Russia. And this lasted for several years until a representative assembly of the land elected a new Tsar in 16. 13. Mikhail Romanov I, which established the dynasty that were to rule Russia for the next three centuries until the February Revolution in 1917. Mikhail quickly sought peace with both Poland and Sweden and managed to get some treaties 
Though Russia gained peace through these treaties and preserved its independence, it was forced by Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth to make substantial territorial concessions. Most, however, were recovered during the next centuries to come, during later Tsars such as Peter the Great and such. Mikhail also promised the assembly that had elected him to make the Orthodox Church the only state religion. So there will no, be no questions about converting to Catholicism or to Protestantism, which was one of the reasons why both Sweden and the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth had entered into Russia. Mikhail also removed a lot of the local power among the boyars, the local nobles. They got reduced ability to rule over their own areas and they also were forced to officially adopt orthodoxy as their Christian denominations. Because before they were much more free in being Catholic or Protestants, which had led into this entire mess about Russia maybe converting into a new state religion and thus getting invaded with religious pretexts from both the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth and Sweden, who had support from various factions within the Boyar nobility. Mikhail reduced local independence of nobles and of other sorts of entities to a bare minimum than before and he centralized power a lot in the Tsar office. In fact, Mikhail could be said to have created Russia as we know it, as this strongly centralized authoritarian state. We need to remember that the time of troubles were an extremely destructive event. In just 15 years, the crown had changed over six times between various pretenders and claimants to the Tsar throne, and estimates of the total deaths caused by these various conflicts and rebellions and famines range in the millions. And the worstly affected areas of Russia experienced population declines of over 50% due to mass slaughter and starvation and other types of deaths caused by these events. The time of troubles were a series of events just as brutal as what the Mongols did a couple of hundred years before. We have to remember that this is also far closer to our time when I say that this is probably much more important to understand Russian history than the Mongols. I usually think that the Mongols have often been blamed for the ills of history across Russia. Wrongly. They were certainly brutal and caused great devastation. But that they were not the cause behind the later developments, rather it was this event, or this series of events, that started the history of strong authoritarian centralized rule in Russia. As a strong centralized Tsar was needed to bring order due to the chaos that these events had caused. And the previous decentralized structure of Russia had just added more chaos as local nobles and regions wanted to have their independence or impose their own will and thus contributed to the chaos during the time of troubles. Hopefully you have found this video interesting and fun to view, my dear viewers. Please comment if you have any questions and push the like button. Both comments and likes helps with the algorithm. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities. Stark will come out in the